Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is June 8th, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, Muhammad Ali had his boxing title revoked when he was convicted of draft evasion. The conviction was later overturned by the Supreme Court. Now, Rand Paul has introduced the Muhammad Ali Voluntary Service Act to end the draft. Then, Hillary was pronounced the nominee by the AP even before voting began in yesterday's primaries. Today, Bernie is poised to lay off hundreds of staff members. And from Dresden, Germany, InfoWars Live Bilderberg 2016 coverage. For 15,000 people to come here and protest the people who are against uh, illegal migration, right? It's crazy that our government pays salary. Yeah. And protester. <laughs> It'd be paid. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. We begin tonight with some breaking news out of Tel Aviv. At least four are dead in a Tel Aviv shooting. A Fox News producer in Jerusalem confirmed the death toll and said that five others were wounded and are in severe condition. A spokeswoman for the police said that there were at least two terror suspects and both were neutralized meaning either killed or detained, and police are, police are searching the area to make sure there are no other attackers. Now, of course, when you have stories like this, breaking news, developing news, the numbers can change quite frequently, so we'll bring you the updates as they become available. But for right now, let's talk more about domestic news. Last night, Mrs. Clinton got a resounding victory over Bernie Sanders. Now, you can debate how legitimate that victory was, but it was a victory nonetheless. And it makes me wonder... Uh, for all the people who were feeling the burn over the past, um, I guess, year or so, uh, going out there to these Bernie Sanders campaigns and doing all the things out there, are they satisfied with this outcome? Because as we pointed out last night, at least as the votes were last night, uh, Mrs. Clinton pretty much hit a hole in one, not even dribbling into the cup. It's like dropping an ice cube into a big bucket and just got the exact number of the votes that she needed to uh, pretty much become the presumptive nominee for the Democratic Party. And I'm pretty sure uh, many Sanders supporters are not exactly happy about this. And going forward, is this going to hurt or help the Democratic Party? I'm not exactly sure. But now we see that uh, Mr. Sanders is laying off much of his staff. It says a Sanders campaign is poised to cut staff by half. The primary is over except for D.C., a campaign source said, referencing next week's primary, and added that the dismissed staffers are getting severance. And one person who used to work for Sanders said it's more of the job ending as opposed to beginning uh, getting laid off. And uh, they threw everything they could at Sanders. Of course, I wasn't a Sanders supporter, but I wanted to see the guy get a fair shake. And in the last days of pretty much his campaign, they've come after the guy with everything they could, even going as far as to ask him if he was sexist for merely remaining in the race. Somebody actually did this. I believe it was a New York Times reporter. They approached him. They said, Mr. Sanders, is it sexist? for you to continue on in this campaign and uh, go against Hillary Clinton. He's like, why should I have to give up my campaign? And beyond that, why is it sexist just because she's a woman? It's completely ridiculous uh, standards as you go forward. And it would have been the same thing back when Obama was running against Romney or anybody else. They don't have to give up their campaign just because he's black. They have every right, even though I don't agree with their politics, to continue their campaign until they are crushed into the dust, as happened with Mr. Sanders, but it's not racist or sexist or bigoted or in any way or fashion to continue your campaign just because your opponent looks different than you. So keep that for what it is, you social justice, uh, self-righteous people. And that's just one thing about the Sanders campaign. Now, one thing I did notice when we were out at the Sanders campaign, Joe Biggs was out there at the uh, polling place trying to hear uh, from the various Sanders supporters. There were no rocks being thrown. There are no riot cops. Uh, nobody was tossing barricades or lighting stuff on fire. And it was a very stark contrast to what we saw at Trump events. Now, of course, I'm talking to people who show up in protest of Donald Trump. And it doesn't even matter what you believe about the guy's politics, where you love him, hate him, indifferent, whatever. Disagreeing with somebody does not allow you the right to go to their rallies and assault the police officers there or assault the supporters for said candidate. Case in point, what we've seen recently at the Donald Trump rallies, San Jose, where the lady went out there, she was wearing her Trump shirt, and somebody assaulted her, smashed an egg into her face. Now, I'm not a Hillary Clinton supporter, but if I go to a Hillary Clinton event and I attack a young lady by smashing an egg in her face, are you guys going to sit back and say that was justified, that was completely 
uh, rational behavior. No, you're not going to say that because that's criminal activity and it should be prosecuted as such, just like what I experienced when I went out to Albuquerque. There he is, tear gas. You guys know I don't like that stuff. This guy's going around. Huh? Bro, you sent me with a freaking rock. What's your name, bro? You sent me with a rock. You, yeah, you. Oh. You guys sent me with a freaking rock. There you ran. Now I got the tear gas in my lungs. Now, the young man you see before you is not the person who hit me with a rock, but they're starting to round up these people who are going out there assaulting people, lighting fires, and doing all that craziness that you see at these riots and rallies and everything going on around the country. And some people saying they're coming down too hard on this kid. They're charging him with uh, felony charges for going after the officers. Honestly, I don't think that's going to stick. I think they're overcharging the kid, trying to get him to plead down. But regardless, you can take a look at this for yourself. APD says targeted their officers. So far, they've arrested three, including 14-year-old Marcus Griego. The commander actually witnessed Marcus throw a rock directly and hit the sergeant that was standing next to him. APD says this picture was taken after the rock was thrown and that officers confronted Griego. My understanding is that Marcus kind of laughed it off and kind of just pretended that it wasn't a big deal. Griego is charged with two felony counts of aggravated battery on a peace officer. Earlier we were talking about how Bernie Sanders is having to lay off or let go of his staff, whichever way you want to look at it. And now we see that he's not the only one. This is going on all across the nation. Ralph Lauren, for one, they're looking to cut about 1,200 jobs. And this follows the layoffs of places like Macy's, Nordstrom's, and Walmart. Walmart was very surprising to me. And several other retailers, including Gap, Sears, JCPenney, have gone on to announce plans to shut down their facilities. Now, if you guys recall this video that happened, I guess a couple of weeks ago, the guys were out going to these various rallies. And there's one thing in particular, it, this is like burned in my head of all the videos we've shot. Uh, it's this woman who owned a uh, furniture factory or she had some kind of furniture outlet. She hired movers and other people like that. And she was talking to this young girl, high school age girl. And the girl's like, why do I want to be a mover? Why do I want to move furniture around? Well, besides the fact it's a job and if you don't like it, you can go be replaced by a robot working at Wendy's. But uh, in this article, they say that home furniture and home furnishing retailers have actually added jobs. So a uh, young lady out there, if you want a job, you may actually end up working at one of these uh, furniture factory outlets. So just keep that in mind as you go forward in your career. And of course, if you don't want to do that, start your own business. I think that'd be great. And I'd love to see uh, more businesses started here in America. Now, one thing that's not great about the United States of America, we have Epidemic health crisis. Now, there are many types of epidemics. Uh, you got smoking epidemics, drinking epidemics, and now they're saying that we have an obesity epidemic and it's hit a new high. And they say overall, 38% of U.S. adults are obese and 17% of teenagers are. Two reports, fine. That's obese and it's medically defined as having a BMI body mass index of measure to height and weight that's more than 30. And this is the deal about this. And before I go too deep into this, back when I was in high school, they used to give us these tests too. And we always laughed at them because, you know, guys who played sports, you know, I weigh about 10 pounds more than I did back when I was in high school, but I was in high school, I was in really good shape. And basically they came back to me and said that according to this BMI, this body mass index, I was overweight, which, you know, I was, you know, 5'11", uh, whatever I was, you know, 180 pounds, you know, rock solid and like, uh, the paper says that you're overweight. I'm like, well, the paper is stupid because I'm obviously not overweight. So take all this with a grain of salt. If you have, if you're going by this BMI, it's not a, exactly the most accurate thing on the planet. I know it's kind of the standard here in the States. So don't sweat it too bad if you're a little bit overweight according to this, because it doesn't take into account things like, uh, you know, body mass, uh, uh, body muscle and things like that. So keep that in mind. Now, another thing that you need to keep in mind is the FBI. Now, hopefully, the FBI, as we're talking about them at large, will do something about the Hillary Clinton situation. But regardless, we see uh, Judge Andrew Napolitano telling Americans that they need to wake up to the FBI and their snooping laws. 
it gets worse. It never gets better, no matter who's in the White House and no matter which party controls uh, the Congress. Um, the American people should wake up. This is a major step, far more egregious than the previous ones that have happened before this, which you and I have been talking about, as you say. This is a major step toward a police state. It's done in the name of, it's always done in the name of keeping us safe. Who or what will keep our liberties safe? Now, this year, we've had a string of very high-profile celebrity deaths. We've seen uh, David Bowie, Prince, uh, Kimbo Slice just the other day, and, of course, Muhammad Ali, you know, considered to be one of the greatest, not only boxers, but athletes of all time, one of the most outspoken and uh, identifiable, iconic people of his generation, and rightfully so. And many people will identify with Ali, remember him for many reasons, and you're welcome to your reasons. Uh, but I always remember his charisma, things of that nature, you know, how important he was to the black community, along with guys like Jim Brown. I actually got a chance to meet Jim Brown, came here to Austin. I believe it was at LBJ's museum when I was supposed to see Obama, but the Secret Service didn't let me in because I wasn't, you know, uh, approved uh, Secret Service. But uh, not for nothing, talking about Muhammad Ali, I think one of the best ways to remember Ali is to remember one of the biggest political statements of his career, if not the biggest, is when he said, I'm not going to Vietnam. And he said this for a very profound reason. He said, basically, you can find the clips on YouTube, but he said, I'm not going to go fight in a war for a country that hates me. And of course, racial relations have gotten somewhat better. You wouldn't know this watching uh, mainstream television, but they've gotten somewhat better since that time. But regardless of race, I don't think you should have to go fight in a war for any reason if you do not agree with that. Uh, we were talking to David Knight last night. And he said his parents, his grandparents, they went out and fought in World War II. And you cannot stop those guys from signing up. Why? Because they believed in the war. If people believe in a war, you don't need to have a draft or a selective service or anything like that. People will go volunteer for that war. But when I turn on the TV and I see, oh, we want you to go kill Gaddafi, who's just a regional threat, take him out and then let uh, ISIS, Al-Qaeda and all these other terror groups take over Libya. Are the United States Americans safer now that Gaddafi's gone? Absolutely not. Was he a good guy? No. But are we safer? No. They want to do similar things in Syria. If you can go all around the world, hey, uh, I want you to join this man's military and use a drone to go blow up a wedding party in Pakistan or Yemen. I want you to go fly and blow up a uh, Doctors Without Borders hospital in Afghanistan. Of course, I don't want anything to do with these wars. And that's why you see these guys come back in record numbers. They're on psych meds. They commit suicide. They have all these health defects because of uh, psychological trauma, not just physical trauma, that's a whole nother thing, but the psych psychological trauma that they have when they're told, hey, go to this village and kill everybody out there, or uh, deliver these people to be tortured like Joe Biggs had to do. Nobody wants to endure these type of things, and people join for various reasons. Sometimes it's GI benefits or whatever else, but I think a great way to honor Muhammad is uh, with Rand Paul's bill, and it's called the Muhammad Ali Voluntary Service Act, and this will be presented to Congress in honor of the fame boxer who refused to serve in Vietnam. I think it's a very great way to honor Muhammad Ali's memory. Now, before we go into a very shocking video featuring Alex Jones, I wanna leave you with this. State police are now swiping motors, debit cards, and prepaid cards to seize their money. It's called an ERAD, Electronic Recovery and Access to Data Machine, and state police began using 16 of them last month. Here's how it works. If a trooper suspects you may have money tied to some type of a crime, the highway patrol can scan any cards you have and seize the money. We're going to look for different factors in the way that you're acting. We're going to look for different, uh, if there's a difference in your story, if there's some way that we can prove that you're basically falsifying information to us about your, uh, about your business. Now, before we go into our special reports, we're going to end with a very shocking video, a very shocking revelation, if we can pull it up on the Drudge Report. You see the golden goose, glowing golden girl, Hillary Clinton, and she is now being endorsed by none other than Alex Emmerich Jones. I know this is a very shocking revelation for you people out there. You know, Alex has been uh, supporting Trump. Actually, he has a Trump sticker right here, right here on his desk. You know, he was supporting Trump until recently here. I walked in earlier today and I saw Alex in this very studio, for lack of a better term, worshiping Hillary Rodham Clinton. And we had to have an intervention, damn near an exorcism, to get him off of the golden goose that is known as Hillary Rodham Clinton. This is very disturbing footage. I do caution all of our viewers out there, but this is what it is. This is teleprompter free. This is what really happens here at the Infowars.com studios.
right, now this is take one of the Second Amendment piece. Uh, going to do a dry run here so everybody's good, the audio. Okay, let's start. Okay. Hillary Clinton is going to be your Democratic nominee. Now, Mrs. Clinton is a very conservative right, person. Joe, Travis, you guys, you gotta come help me, man. Alex what, what, is freaking what, what, out. What's, what's I, going on? What's I don't know what he's doing. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Right, he lost his mind or something. I mean, I've never seen him do this before. It's totally out of character. Help! Help, guys, help! Come on, come on, come on, come on. What's happening? Oh my god, it's my colleague. What the hell is going on here? I love you. 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 I love you.
throat lozenges in there when I have to scream. Ricola. Ricola. That's a flask, it's a battery for charging. <laughs> That's a microphone. That is called the super zoom camera to get the faces of the globalists as they go in to plan our future. Right? They're going to dictate. That's a Now that's got a blade on it, and that's got a pair of pliers. It's a, called a Leatherman, but it's a tool. So we're here till Sunday. And uh, i got some cords in there. The Is this going to happen every day? Some cup Maybe. links. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Well, this will be fun. Okay. I'll pack lighter next time. Those are memory cards in there. You can take your back. Yep. And... Uh, we got about 2,000 people watching this live right now. That's a, a camera, and then there's my press pass. Yeah. That's right. I'm like a German. I always have. I keep everything with me. You know, I'm a. I'm an engineer as well. You know, got all my tools. Tools of the trade. Fingernail clippers, are those legal in Germany? We can carry fingernail clippers? Right? Fingernails? What do you say, fingernails? Fingernagel. Fingernagel? Hmm? All right. Fingernagel. Fingernagel. Nagel. 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 What's this in? Oh, yeah. that is a clamp. Oh. For what? <laughs> to, For what? To, a clamp to clamp anything. You know what, what I did with this before is I, I put it here and I clamped my hat to it. I was holding my hat right here. Okay. When I, was on, I went on live on the air today to millions of people. That's all that is. You know, it just clamps things. I have, yeah, press pass. Oh, you ever been to Texas? It's a great place. We have uh, things like the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, the Fourth Amendment. It's good stuff. Am I good to go? Yes. Oh. You guys, you guys look young. You guys look younger than me. You're like 22? Yeah. Hey, looking young here, you guys. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm good to go. So please, yeah, come with me. Yeah. Over. Oh, okay, because they're gonna okay. check the passport. And now I'm in the uh, I'm in the second depot here. There's Josh Owens had his bag searched. This is a safe zone. <laughs> now they go through our passports and make sure we're we're good Americans. I assure you. Except he's a Canadian. <laughs> That's Dan really Dix bad. right there. <laughs> so, uh, and what's your name again? Alex Poucher. Alex, and where are you from? Uh, St. Louis. St. Louis. Did you came down here for this? Uh, I live in Germany now. Oh, you live in Germany. Yeah. Okay. All right. You have a German girlfriend? I do. Okay. Yeah, she was, she was translating there in the beginning. This young man over here was trying to see what was going on. What's your name, sir? Uh, I'm Alan. Alan. Alan, where are you from? I'm from London. London? Yeah. So you came here to check out the Bilderberg uh, meetings? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we're just we're uh, live streaming right now and just I've, showing I've what's going on. Uh, I've covered over a thousand protests in Europe. About eight uh, German police cars. Well, I think, this, hey, there's one German police car for each person that was walking up near the Bilderbergs. So, yeah. Pot Watson, are you clear? I'm clear. Yeah. For now. Oh, Watson didn't have Watson a bag. Watson doesn't have a bag, so that's white privilege. <laughs> Still had to empty my pocket. He's so privileged, he doesn't have to carry a also, bag. Also, he's a male, so I say we arrest him anyway. F in white male. <laughs> yeah. And the, the police don't realize that their future is also being determined by these uh, this unelected cabal of criminals that are going to meet together and basically determine our fates. And the fact that the mainstream media is not covering, if 200 rock stars got together, there would be press everywhere, right? And you guys would be letting the press go wherever they wanted to. But 200 politicians get together in secret, and it's the end of the frickin' world if you want to show, put a camera on it. It is the literally the end of the world in Dresden, Germany right now. We're witnessing it happen as we speak because we want to show the fact that world leaders get together in secret to talk. You made it? You're good? All right. Luke Radowski has been cleared. Now we got to go through the passport check. I know, passport so check. And, and, and the blacklist and everything right, else that goes along with it. Jeff Berwick from the Dollar Digital Empty over there now being searched. 
So, uh, Luke, did they fully church you? Oh, yeah. Oh, Watson, Watson just got a comment. Love Watson. There he is. <laughs> He's getting the full search. You live on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I went ahead and Facebook mentioned this. So. Cool. We're uh, this only 2,000 people watching now. I think we're all mentioned right now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Just make it happen. So they have these young policemen who don't quite understand the people they're protecting. They've just been told what to do, so they're following orders and uh, making sure that journalists get a good waxing. Okay. Probably because I'm German, they trust me more than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know that's. All right, so as you see, well, you speak good uh, English for being German. Yeah, I lived abroad, and now I live with him. So. Uh, all right. <laughs> So yeah, we're uh, we're just over here, uh, right at least Jeff 50, 100 meters from the Inner Alpen Hotel. 50 meters. Yeah, 50 meters. at least 50 meters. Yeah, th uh, they said to me if everything is fine, we can actually even walk no. there, even for tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is to avoid the same procedure again. We should not go with more than five people. Five people now. So yeah, it was no, 15. No, just say say because like bigger groups right. are more obvious, and then they just to have less trouble well, but of course they can forbid it. you know there's going to be a big protest over at the uh there's caesar 15, statue tomorrow 15 protests are scheduled yeah. for tomorrow at least yeah. so yeah, the problem is when 15. we follow 15 people then there are 16 or whatever how many people follow them i tried to explain it to them and also with the press idea we should have the kind of immunity because we are not participating but observing or reporting about it but i think press is being treated was twice as bad to me that that will be the problem and in the decision of the police head of that unit. All right, guys, did you get beat? No, you look okay. Really. Look like nothing happened. No, nothing happened. Yeah. I mean, we just stayed there to see what we could do and how far right. we could get. Right. Uh, we heard oh, there were some uh, Bilderbergers um, in the lobby, so we went down, downstairs to try to talk to them. One of the security ladies who has been following me around, taking photos of me mm -hmm. uh, throughout the last couple of days, actually uh, spotted me, and uh, that's when uh, these wonderful gentlemen came up and uh, were kind of flabbergasted and shocked. But we're live streaming right now. Excellent. We're going to have the video up on uh, youtube.com forward slash we are changed, and Dix is going to have it up, Lauren Sanders is going to have it up. Um, and yeah, I mean, let these guys talk. All I right. Done enough yeah, talking. go follow those guys, see where they're going. I wonder if they're going to mess with our car right now. I didn't move it quite off the property. So let's see what happens. Lauren, uh, yes. were, you, were you fearful at all for your uh, safety or well-being? Was I fearful for my safety? Well, I was a bit worried that we were going to be sacrificed uh, <laughs> by the Bilderbergers since we stayed after 12, but we managed to survive. But yeah, they were freaked out when they saw us in there. They were like, how did we let this happen? There are people that should not be there. They came up and asked, uh, where are you from? Where are you from? And I'm like, oh, I'm from Canada. <laughs> I don't no. speak jive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, no, where'd you come from? Yeah. <laughs> are you checking out, right? And then we're like, oh, we haven't checked out yet. Just absolute panic. The girl who, yeah. the girl was watching him, walked by them, walked right back <laughs> to get oh, security. Yeah. But then I was like, where's coffee? I want some coffee now. Yeah. Can we have some coffee? And they're like, no. I'm like, well, I'm just, I just want some coffee. Your coffee is really good here. Can we please have some? And they're like, oh, no possible, sir. No. See, they're under a paradox right now. They have to be nice and be uh, respectful yeah, yeah. to people. But then also they have this yeah. impending doom of something they can't talk about that's coming. Yeah. They don't want to talk about it. We tried talking to them at the front desk, and they just weren't interested in having a conversation. No, the lady at the front desk literally, like, she's like, okay. You have to go. You have to go. Like started pushing the roundabout door. Uh, so we just get out of there, and she did it in like the most fakest, most pretend way that you could possibly come off. Uh, but yeah, they are definitely hiding something in there, and you could just see it from all the criminal behavior that they're you exuding. Get, you don't get that panicked. You don't get that freaked out for no reason. Yeah. Unless, you, like, honestly, they looked like yeah. scared, scared mm -hmm. for their jobs, scared for, yeah. and this is a demerit. Oh, absolutely. You, you don't see people with that look in their eyes very often. Rob, do reporting for Infowars.com in Dresden, Germany, outside the Hotel Kibnitzki, uh, Taschenberg Palais, where Bilderberg 2016 is taking place. And I'm standing next to a fellow journalist, uh, alternative blogger, Manfred Petrich. How are you doing today? Fine, great. Yeah. Nice to see you guys again. Well, we're always here. It just seems to be another, it's an alternative media circus. Exactly. It's not, uh, we don't have all the big trucks, all the fancy gear, but we're still out here getting the intel and uh, making the confrontations. Who do you expect, uh, who, who are you surprised is going to be here this year? 
Well, I'm surprised that, for instance, uh, Klaus Schwab from the WEF is here. Mm -hmm. You know, the organizer of the Davos meeting okay. is here. That That's a sign. Also that the highest member of the Swiss parliament is here. Then, of course, all, there are so many other people like Breedlove, mm -hmm. a general a supreme commander who is on his way out. Maybe he's looking for a job or something. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is a good networking situation right, for these right. elitists. Like Petraeus, you know. Petraeus is unemployed. Right. Uh, yeah, so and I, a lot of what's being said, I'm, I'm concerned that Lindsey Graham's here. Right. He's a sitting senator, which you normally don't see a sitting senator at a Bilderberg meeting, unless, I guess, you're Hillary Clinton back in 2008, who secretly right. came to the meeting unannounced. Do you think Merkel's going to show up? No, I don't think so. But because she's on, a, on her way out, mm -hmm. I think uh, the reason why the three ministers, German ministers, are coming is because maybe they will select her, the, the, who will follow her. Her successor. Here. Yeah. And it could be von der Leyen, the defense minister. Okay. I mean, there's some rumors about that. Right. And it looks as if the police are now arriving into the area of uh, inside the cordoned off concrete zone. Not, not a big zone, not as big as last year in Telfs. Oh, yeah. A big contrast. That's right, but uh, remember, uh, at the same time, or uh, just the day before, was a G7. Mm -hmm. That's no, why they were very uh, kind of security aware, you know. They were freaking out. Right, that's right. That's what, that's what we said, and that's the videos we shot. And last they year they had, they cordoned off 10 kilometers mm -hmm. and, and closed roads. That's why I'm surprised that they're doing it in the middle of a city right. where they can't do that that much. And you see how many tourists are running around? Yeah. They can't. But they're obviously unaware. Look at these people. They have no, no idea what's going on course. right now. No, no. This is our friend Helmut, who we, we did an interview with uh, a couple days ago, and it got a lot of views. A lot of people were interested in what you had to say about Bilderberg. A lot of people were impressed with the knowledge that you had and the anger that you showed. Even though you're very subdued, I have people who are like, oh, boy, he really gets mad there at the end. He doesn't like those globalists. And so after we did that interview, you then pulled out a piece of paper and showed it to me. Let's pull, pull that out and let's show it to the people oh, yeah. yes, and tell people what it, what, it, what it is and what they're looking at. Yes, it was from last time. Uh, we just had some sheets with, with us to give the people some mm -hmm. information about Bilderbergers. Uh, nothing special, just common information about Bilderbergers. And we were stopped from police. And they took away all the sheets. And, and when you say sheets, you're talking about flyers, right? We yeah, call them flyers, flyers and flyers, flyers. Okay. And uh, just double-sided information about Bilderbergers. And well, sure. of course, uh, they banned me from the square. Okay. And that's a sheet. I just have my thumb on my address. Yeah. Sure, sure. That's just fine. for. Yeah, yeah. I don't like Bilderbergers here. I don't oh, yeah. like no. them at home. Yeah, exactly. Know? Well, yeah. read, so. read to the people what it says, because most of the people here uh, speak Well, English. it means um, in German it's Ordnungswidrigkeit. This means some, some lower crime okay. uh, against the Saxonian media law. The media law? Media law. Ordnungswidrigkeit, Sächsisches Pressegesetz. So they put all the flyers. And I will get not only this ticket, but some letter in a few weeks or some days. Well, I don't care. Uh, I make it like, how was it? Elvis Presley? Yeah. Return to sender. <laughs> <laughs> Address unknown, something like this. Right. Well, um, yes. And that's a ticket. Yeah. So you and get a ticket for, pa for passing out flyers, you essentially got ticketed. That's right. And they also banned me from the square. Yeah. And, but... They've been very polite, yeah? Oh, yeah. They were friendly. And Here, here's polite. a ticket, but this is polite. <laughs> yeah, but they, polite. They, they really said, uh, one policeman said, I'm very sorry, but we are instructed from local government wow. to watch very closely, clearly everything because of this event here in Taschenberg. Uh, what's the name of this paper? A Sächsische Zeitung from today. Uh, today. Mm -hmm. okay. And here uh, you can read 15,000 anti-fascist action. An action An anti-fascist anti is yeah. another name for leftists, right? Yes. People who don't really have yes. jobs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they get Antifa. They, they get um, money per hour, about 45, Euro. That's pretty nice. Yeah, and, and yeah. for eating and for the bus transfer. 
So they're paying for 15,000 people to come here and protest the people who are against uh, illegal migration, right? Um, what they did in the real, I th not maybe not every person gets the money. I don't know. Right, right. But the uh, leaders do. Uh, but uh, yeah. uh, it's uh, it's crazy that our government pays salary. Yeah. And protesters. <laughs> and we pay. Yeah. It's like uh, the election. Mm -hmm. The election, many, many posters, mm -hmm. many, many informations in the news or uh, or newspaper, and we pay that we make a, cr uh, make a cross, write a cross for a special party. Right. Yeah. And, and so they're going to be in this square tomorrow, even though the police have said no more than 15 to a group in this area around yeah. here. So that'll be interesting how that's going to go. Yeah, this was interesting because I uh, asked people here in Dresden, uh, in the restaurants, and I, I said, yes, uh, what do you know, what is happening? And today in the morning, uh, one uh, man from a rest restaurant said, yeah, today in the newspaper, uh, you can read uh, 15,000 uh, will come. And I said, what? And yes, 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 in newspaper. And therefore, I, I want to newspaper. Mm -hmm. And I saw I, in the Google, I was searching uh, about uh, Billeberg and uh, yeah, demonstration tomorrow. And then I found uh, the local TV, mm -hmm. uh, MDR. And then I saw, uh, you can see in the internet um, the demonstrations, um, the legal demonstrations. Police knows. Okay, so this will be a legal demonstration. Yes. Ah. Yeah. So there's always a way around the rules when you want to create some sort of weird yeah, atmosphere. It's a democracy. We yeah. have democracy here. Our borders are wide open. Now, that last sentence may generate a collective yawn among a large swath of Americans, and some Americans may even consider that sentiment to be racist. But their undivided attention on the matter of our open border may soon be met with an electric jolt of yet another hidden danger slipping into the United States. It hasn't taken long for Obama's disastrous Iranian nuclear arms deal to grow legs. As a result, the Iranian government, a supporter of the Shia militant group Hezbollah, recently had $100 billion in frozen assets thawed. And now Hezbollah is growing exponentially in Central America. The House Financial Services Committee Task Force met on the Hill today to investigate the mushrooming threat of terrorism financing in Central America. It is clear to us by now that there was a complete lack of political will to fight money laundering and terrorist financing in Argentina during the last 12 years. There was a lack of strategic planning which prevented the government from prioritizing its efforts and making an efficient use of public resources. This in turn led to a serious lack of effectiveness with a related impact on risk levels. Throughout the last 10 years, the threats to financial integrity increased significantly as criminals exploited the advantages of a sophisticated financial system with the vulnerabilities of an uncommitted government. One of the main structural vulnerabilities exploited by criminals in recent years was corruption. Corruption under the previous administration was the rule, not the exception, and corrupt officials were rewarded rather than punished. At our financial intelligence unit in particular, the situation was also critical. The strategy was to have no strategy, which allowed for a discretionary use of anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing tools. Uh, and and you, you're, you're, you're saying that it's expanding? It is expanding, yes, sir. It is expanding because uh, it is making a, a conscious, sustained, well-funded effort to actually uh, reach out not just to the local Shia communities, which are mainly Syrian and Lebanese, but it is actually reaching out uh, to convert non-Muslims to Shia Islam. So you have the supreme leader surrogates there on, on, on the one hand, and then in tandem that, with that, you, uh, you have Hezbollah. Correct. And what I see is that the Hezbollah clerics are mainly focusing on the uh, Shia communities of Arab immigrants of Lebanese and Syrian descent. The Iranians are focusing on the outreach missionary effort, but they are combined most of the time. They're overlapping in the same mosques, in the same centers. Uh, they're interacting. Uh, there is a stream of very senior uh, clerics coming from both Iran and Lebanon to visit on a constant basis. Uh, and 
the Hezbollah representatives, together with the Iranian ones, are constantly uh, cooperating on this effort. And this effort, to, to a large extent, is geared toward building support, galvanizing, uh, so to speak, the troops, uh, indoctrinating and radicalizing, uh, and it is also uh, designed as a facade for the financial activities uh, which are um, managed uh, in coordination. First, Hezbollah is not the same organization that they were 15 years ago, just 15 short years ago. In the early 2000s, they began moving small quantities of cocaine from the tri-border area of Latin America into fledgling markets at that time in Europe and the Middle East. Flash forward to 15 years later, they're now moving multi-tons of cocaine into Europe uh, to uh, attempt to satisfy the ever, uh, uh, ever increasing demand for cocaine in Europe, in Middle East, and other emerging markets. They possess a demonstrated ability to move, again, hundreds of tons of cocaine over that 15-year period and move massive amounts of, of currency, hundreds of millions, perhaps billions of dollars in currency around the world in the most sophisticated uh, money laundering scheme or schemes that we have ever witnessed. They have metastasized into a hydra with international connections that the likes of ISIL and groups like Al-Qaeda could only hope to have. But don't expect the Obama administration to provide any real answers. That would be a miracle. Instead, White House spokesman Josh Earnest has chosen to cover up statements he clearly made about the Iranian nuclear deal. Back in 2013, multi-million dollar terrorism financing is happening for a reason. And when they strike, the sheeple are going to beg for our borders to be closed. John Bound for Infowars.com. <laughs>